Hello! In this video, we're going to be learning how to make Pong in Python using Pygame. Even though it's recommended that you know the basics of Python for this video, this video is for anyone interested in making a video game by coding. First off, we're going to create a file named Pong.py and import the modules Pygame, Time, and Random. Then we set the screen resolution to 1280 by 720 pixels using pygame.display.set mode. We also create some other basic variables that we're going to be using in our key loop. While our game loop is not done, we fill the screen with the color black and we check if the user clicks on the quit button on the window. In every iteration of the loop, we update the screen and do clock.tick FPS to make sure our game runs in 60 FPS. Now when we run our program, we see a black window, which means our program worked as intended. We set the player width and height of both the players to 30 pixels by 180 pixels. We also set the positions of the players such that the first player is on the left side of the screen and center vertically, and the second player is on the right side of the screen and also center vertically. Next, we'll be creating a function called draw game where we'll be drawing the border to the wider and both the players to the screen. We do this with the help of the pygame.draw.rect and the pygame.draw.line functions. Now, when we run our program, we see the two players and the borders. We also set the velocity of the players to 0 and the player speed to 1. We create a function named TickPlayers, which we are going to use to control the players. The W and S keys are used to move the first player up or down, and the up and down arrow keys are used to move the second player up or down. To make the players' velocities, reduce over time, we multiply the velocities by 0.9. Then we can update the player's positions based on the player's velocities and make sure that the player's position is not outside the par game window. We return the variables and call the function so that the variables that we just changed are also updated in the main program. Now, when we run our code, we can see that we can control the players using the WASD keys or the arrow keys. First, we set the ball position to the center of the screen and the ball radius to 15 pixels. We can easily draw the ball to the screen by using the pygame.draw.circle function in the game loop. We set the ball x and y velocities, the ball direction, and the ball speed. Then we create a tick ball function where we're going to handle all the ball mechanics. First we update the ball's position based on the ball's velocity. And then we create two lists that represent the two players, and we use these to check if the ball collides with the players. If the ball collides with the players, then we move the ball a little to the left or the right of the player and multiply the x velocity of the ball by negative 1 so that the ball bounces off the player. And then we change the y velocity by either 1 or 2 to add a sense of randomness. We also make sure that the ball bounces off the screen if it touches the edge of the screen. 
by multiplying the y velocity by negative 1 and adjusting the position of the ball slightly so that it does not go outside the screen. Now we just need to return the variables we just changed and call the function. We're also going to create this useful function called reset ball that we're going to call before the start of each round. This is essentially going to reset the position, the velocity and the direction of the ball and the position of the players. Now we can run our program and see our code in action. To add a little fun to the game, we're also going to work on smash mechanics. Smash is going to be basically when the player is moving their paddle really fast and hits the ball at the same time. When this happens, the ball should be like red and then the ball can be like moving really really fast. Since we don't want the ball to move too fast, we create a variable called ball max speed to set a limit to how fast the ball can move. If the ball velocity is greater than the ball max speed after the ball hits the player paddles, then we reduce the velocities and draw a red circle. When we run our program, we can see that when we move the paddle really really fast while touching the ball, the ball turns red. To keep track of the scores of both the players, we create a list with two integers. We also set the max score to 5. To check if the game should update the score, we're going to create a function called check score. If the ball touches the right edge of the screen, then we return 0, which means player 1 got a point. And if the ball touches the left side of the screen, we return 1, which means player 2 scored a point. To keep track of things like whether we're in the game mode or the game over mode, we create a variable called mode and initially set that equal to game. And then in our game loop, we see that if the mode is equal to game, only then do we call the functions related to the main game. Now inside of this if statement, we call the check score function to figure out if we should change the mode, update the score, reset the timer, and call the reset ball function. Now once the player scores, we don't want the next round to start immediately because that would be too quick for the player. So we say that if the mode is scored, then we don't do anything until we waited for 1.5 seconds. But if one of the player's scores is greater than or equal to the max score, then we set the mode to game over. To display our scores, we're just going to um, use this random font and we can simply add the code to display text to the screen in the draw game function. If the mode is game over, then we figure out who the winner is and we render some text congratulating the winner. Now we can run our program one last time to check if our scoring functionality works as intended. As we can see, since player 1 reaches the max score of 5, our game says that player 1 wins the game. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, it would be nice if you could just hit the like button and subscribe because I'm a pretty new channel and these videos usually take me a lot of time to make. So if you enjoyed these videos, let me know in the comments below. See ya!